Verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared name in this Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought. There was all that money and he didn't take any. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Now think about that statement right there. He got down from the chariot. This is a powerful man, an important man, but he's been humbled. And so he sees a servant coming, and he stops the chariot and gets down from it. Doesn't stay up there going, what do you want, servant? Now he gets down from it and says, is all well. This is a changed man. God has changed this man. And he said, all is well. My master sent me saying, indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants. And they carried them on ahead of him. And when he came to the citadel, he took them from his hand and stored them away in the house and they let the men go and they departed. Now when he went in and stood before his master, Elisha said to him, where'd you go? And he said, well, I didn't go anywhere. He said to him, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. What was Gehazi's expectation? Hey, I'm a servant of God. I'm helping Elisha who told you what to do. Gehazi's probably the guy who went out to greet him and gave him the message. Hey, I'll take that. I deserve that. I deserve that. Hmm. His greed was rewarded with leprosy. Here's how Jesus describes what a servant of God should be. This is from Luke 17. You don't need to turn there. Luke 17, verse 7. Which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he's come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. This is the heart of a servant of God. Not just a pastor, not just an elder. All the servants of God. God gives us amazing promises of provision and blessing. They're not dependent upon our performance. And we should not be like those in the parable Jesus told about all the guys that got hired during the day at different times. And then at the end of the day when they got paid, the guys that got, came last got paid and the guys that came first went, whoa, did you see what those guys that only worked an hour got? This is going to be really cool what we get. And they got the same thing. And they thought this was unfair. And the Lord said, hey, this is what we agreed to to the beginning. It's my money. You agreed to this. We have a contract. What's your problem? What's your problem? We are called to be servants, not expecting to get riches and reward, not expecting for God to make us you know, pastors of a 10,000 person church with 17 services per week on TV and radio throughout the world. No, you know what? God called me to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I am so blessed and honored to be able to stand here every Sunday morning and have the opportunity to break the bread of God's word and hand it to you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. That is an honor for me. 
And each one of us in whatever path of faith, whatever journey of faith we are on, wherever God has put you, placed you, you are a servant of God. And He has promised to provide you salvation, an eternal home, to satisfy and provide for all of your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. He's promised that the good work He began in you, this is the one that in my 30 years of following Him, this one is becoming more and more important to me. He promises in Philippians that He who has begun a good work in you shall complete it. After 30 years, I look to the Lord and I go, I don't feel complete yet. Am I really in you? Man, I struggled with this or I didn't see this 30 years ago and now here I am and I'm still wondering what's going on in this area of my life. I don't have this all together yet. And that promise comes into my mind. Hey, I started it and I finish what I start, says the Lord. That's His promise to us. Those are His promises. That's there. Why do you want or do you expect recognition when you do something unto the Lord? That's the flesh. That's the flesh. That's us wanting to get a little tickling. Get a little, hey, did you see what Pastor Kevin did? Whoa, man. If God has blessed you through His Word, praise His name. Praise His name. And those of you who know me know my standard answer when someone says, man, the Lord really blessed me, or that was a good message. God is faithful. And I say that because God says in His Word that His Word does not go out without accomplishing exactly what He intended for it to do. And He's given me the opportunity as pastor of this church to be a participant in sending out His Word. And when I hear that, I go, wow, it's just like God said. He said, my Word accomplishes exactly what I intended it to. Isn't God faithful? He is. He is. And we are His servants. And if we had an employee that we paid to take care of things, Jesus says, you wouldn't thank him profusely for all he's done. No, you'd pay him. You'd pay him. That's the thanks. Gazi's expectation was that his master and he should be rewarded for what they do beyond the reward they already had. Both situations had to do with pride. Hey, I'm God's servant. I deserve something. Hey, I'm a big, powerful person. My leprosy is bigger than just this little dirty creek thing. It's pride. 